big welcome to my first ever episode of Sundays with Sarah. I so need to do some sort of start title or something different for these vlogs because I'm hoping it's something that I'm going to be able to continue to do. I uploaded a sit down chatty vlog one day last week. You guys loved it so much. I really enjoyed doing it so I came up with the idea of doing these little episodes I guess, just more formal sit down chats about anything that's relevant, anything that's going on in the world, anything that you guys want to hear and doing them every Sunday and calling them Sundays with Sarah. I'm going to see how they go, I'm going to do them for a couple of weeks. If you guys are loving it, I will continue and if you guys are hating it and finding them boring, then I won't, I will be offended, slightly. No, I'm just joking. I won't be offended. I know you guys love our daily vlogs anyway, so we'll just stick to that. For now, I am going to do some Sundays with Sarah though, the low, <laughs> and see how they go. So, today's topic is going to be something that's very relevant. It's something that we get asked quite a lot on our daily vlogs on our main channel, The Ingham Family, and something that a lot of you guys said, please will you do a vlog a Sunday with Sarah on it if you start doing them. And also, it's a topic that I have been thinking about non-stop for the last month, maybe. That is babies! That's not going to be a shock to a lot of you. It's come up so much in our daily vlogs. I'm thinking about it all the time and I just thought it would be a nice way to give you guys some information on how we're feeling about it and just for me to get out how I'm feeling. So one of the most asked questions that we get is, are you going to have another baby? Will there be a fourth baby Ingham or not? Or are you happy with three girls? Now, for, let me start from when I was a child. When I was a child, I always said to all my friends, I will either have two or four babies. That's it, two or four. I don't want one. I don't, obviously as a child, I didn't know like, fertility and things like that or if I'd be able, able to have children but I was lucky enough to be able to conceive quite quickly. I know that's not the case for a lot of women. I do have friends and family that struggle to conceive and I never take for granted that I am one of the lucky ones that can conceive when I want to conceive. Um, I always said I wanted two or four babies and then when I got with Chris that all changed. Chris said he would really like three girls. I already had Isabel and he said it would complete our lives if we could have two more children and we deep down we really wanted girls. Chris always said he'd love three girls. Obviously when I was pregnant having a girl was not something that we thought about. Having a healthy baby was all we wanted and with Esme's and Isla's pregnancy, and Isabel's, but we're just talking about with Chris. With Esme's and Isla's pregnancy, we both said we didn't care about the sex. We weren't bothered, we just wanted a healthy baby. Deep down, I kind of feel guilty for saying this, but I'm all about honesty, and so I'm going to be honest with you guys. I really, really, really was terrified of having a boy. And I don't know why, because with Isabel, I was convinced she was a boy, and I was so excited, and then when I got a girl, I don't know why, but it really scared me, the thought of having a boy. I just felt like I wouldn't know what to do with a boy. I know that sounds so cliche, but I was so girly myself. I love pink and fluffy and flowers and tiaras. And the thought of having a boy, it just, I don't know. I really wanted girls. Deep down, I really wanted girls. Obviously, if I'd have been given a boy, then I would have loved it just the same as what I love a girl. It would have just been different. So deep down, me and Chris really always wanted three girls. We were so lucky to get that. Like, not only did we get three children, we got three healthy children and the sex of children that we really, really, really desperately wanted. So we felt incredibly, and still do feel, incredibly lucky. And when we had Isla, from my point of view, and Chris's at the time, our family was complete. That was it, we didn't want any more children, we'd got our three girls, all were healthy, all were happy, and it just felt perfect. When Isla turned around two, Chris started hinting about, I don't think I can not have another child, you know? Things like that, and I was like, you definitely can, we've got our three girls, we're happy. And these hints went on for quite a while, and then when 
and then it turned from subtle hints to I really think we should have another baby <laughs> um, and then over the last that's gone on since Isla was two not every day but he has hinted often that he would really like a fourth and final child in his words a fourth and final it sounds right and then he's always reminded me you always said when we first got together you wanted two or four so kind of like jokingly light-hearted way convincing me that we should have a fourth I was happy with three and although I was not completely no way go get the snip I, I've always been the type of person that says never say never for anything but at that moment until about a month ago <laughs> I was completely convinced that I was happy with three and that's the way we were staying obviously the more children you have the more expensive things become and a few of my worries about having a fourth when I decided yeah it, it might be a nice idea the worries that were stopping me were things like money for a start children are expensive they cost money and it's not just everyday things like food you know that's not expensive it's things like after school clubs and dance lessons and swimming lessons and one of the top things is holidays we love to travel as a family if you guys are part of our main channel you'll know how much we travel it's a lot we don't go out with friends like often we don't drink alcohol we don't smoke all of our money basically goes towards our passion which is traveling showing the girls the world making memories as a family whilst the children are young and that's kind of like our main priority now as a family of five holidays can get expensive like really quite expensive especially big holidays like America and you know you're talking around I don't know you could probably do it cheaper if you did it all DIY but you're talking around ten thousand pounds including spending money park tickets all the flights the hotel for a three-week holiday in America probably about eight maybe between seven and eight but then with spending money on top you're talking you know eight to ten thousand pounds which is ridiculous for a holiday it's insane and it takes us years to be able to save to do that but we find it worth it because the memories that we make there are just priceless like they're priceless now when you bring in another one to pay for you can't you start questioning will that mean that we have to cut down and would it be fair to us and the girls to have to have less holidays because we've got more children if that makes sense I know we're still fortunate to even get one holiday a year but like I said it's just it's our passion and I worried that we wouldn't be able to afford holidays if we were paying for more children because we do have to really save for the holidays that we want to go on another thing was cars and things we all fit into a five seat car at the moment obviously if we were to have another child there would be six of us and so the thought of having to get a minibus <laughs> type thing was like no nah, I'm not sure that's something we really want to do but last year we bought a Land Rover Discovery which is actually seven seats anyway so we wouldn't even have to change our car if we had another baby because we already own a seven seat car and then another thing I worried about was space would we all fit where are we all going to sleep but again over the last few weeks we have been looking at buying a new house and the new house actually has five bedrooms so space that wouldn't be an issue at all and then finally another thing that was stopping me having children which some people are probably going to think I'm crazy for but it's other people's opinions like other people's opinions really affect me and I felt when I was pregnant with Isla I felt really bad like telling some people because I knew they'd be disappointed in me or necess wouldn't necessarily want me to have more children and there's members in in families in our families that are quite open about saying you've got three you should stick with three or and that's fine like we're not slating them for having that opinion at all that, that's fine that's their opinion um but it it did affect me to a point where it made me want to not have any more children because I'd be too scared of saying I'm pregnant again <laughs> like I found that really scary to a point where it's it it does and did and still does a little bit stop me wanting to make that leap 
I have said to Chris quite a few times, if we lived on a desert island with nobody else, nobody to give their opinion, nobody to look down on us and say you shouldn't be having more children, then I'd like probably have 10 kids. <laughs> so those were the reasons pretty much that were stopping me wanting a fourth child. And over the last year or, so, or two, last year or two, most of those things have actually gone or been overcome, like the car and the space and things like that. So then over the last month or so, I've been starting to think the only person that's, I've convinced myself we can't have another one because of those things. But the only person that's actually stopping us having another child is me and the only reason I'm stopping us having a child is the opinions that I've got about things and worries I've got about things that actually no longer exist. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. So then I started asking myself, do I want another baby? Do I actually want another baby? Because I feel like it's one of those things that you really, really have to think about. It's not a case of, yeah, but I just want a tiny newborn to cuddle. I'm not one of those people. I literally have to make sure that's going to be my child for, the, for my whole life. I'm going to have full responsibility for it for 18 years, not just six months while it's a tiny, cute little cuddling newborn. And so I literally have to think about every single aspect of having another child before my mind's made up. And the more I think about it, the more I tell myself, yes, I do. If, if these other things don't exist, if I know people are not going to look down on me or tell me off or give me any sort of negativity, then yeah, I do, I would, I would, I would love another child. And I just think it would, I think it would complete our family. Like we've got our little Prinny now, we've got our three girls. And then if we were to have another child, you know, I don't know, I think, I think it would literally just complete our family. And so we've come to the conclusion, me and Chris have spoke about this a lot and in depth. We've come to the conclusion that yes, we would like another baby. And then it was talking about timing and when, when do we want this to happen? Because my worry was, do you not think the girls are a bit old now? Like Isla's five, and I know that's not old. I know Isla's still a small, young child, but if I was to have another baby, Isabel's 12 in September, she's likely to be close to 13 by the time it's born. And is that time gap a little bit too big? That was another worry of mine. But at the end of the day, I've got family and not family, I've got friends that have huge gaps between two of their children and they're still really, 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 really close. They're still really close and when I've spoke to the mums, my friends, they've all said don't not have a child because of the age gap, that's stupid, like it's not a big age gap. And so that's kind of put those worries aside. I'm not ready to have a baby right now. Chris is literally desperate right at this moment. Come off your pill, come off your pill. The only thing that's holding me back right now is, this is prop. I hope this doesn't sound selfish, guys. I hope this doesn't sound really selfish. But we have holidays booked that we've saved for a long time for. We're going to, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you this. We're going on a couple of holidays by the end of the year. One being, I can tell you this, Oct in October, we are going to Florida. And we have saved, we booked this holiday about 19 months ago. And we've been saving and saving and saving a little bit of money each week to be able to pay for this holiday. And I really want to enjoy it. I really want to go to America. I want to go on the rides with Isabel. I want to sit around the pool and have a little cocktail if I fancy one. And the biggest thing, I don't want to be feeling sick and tired and ill whilst we're on holiday in America. I suffered severely with morning sickness, hyperemesis. It wasn't morning sickness, it was all day to a stage where I was waking up at two, three, four o'clock in the morning, jumping out of bed to go and be sick. I don't want to be like that on holiday because not only would it ruin it for me, it would ruin it for Chris and the girls because they'd just be really worried about me. I wouldn't be able to go on the rides with Isabel. I'm her only ride partner because Chris doesn't like big rides so much. And I hope that doesn't sound selfish and it totally makes sense because that is what's, that's my main reason for not wanting to get pregnant right now. However, after America, there's pretty much going to be nothing stopping us. So, we don't know the plan as of yet. We do know that we want another baby. We do know that we don't want it or we don't want to start trying before we go on holiday to America. 
but who knows when we get back. So I hope this video, this short little first edition of Sundays with Sarah was enjoyable. I hope that answers some questions that a lot of you guys have been asking. If you have any more questions, put them just down below and I will answer them. Also, if you could give me some ideas on what topics you'd like me to speak about for next week, comment those down below and I will start getting a list down if I have multiple replies, which I hope I do. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you like Sundays with Sarah. And I will see you all again next Sunday at 12pm. See you later, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.